Hello friends, welcome back to the channel of Clinical Care Insight. In our today's video, we are going to discuss about the spinal cord. So before going in detail of the spinal cord, I would like to inform you that we already suited many lectures on neuroanatomy and neurophysiology. So if you want, you can check the playlist. Now in today's class, what things we wanna discuss? First, we will discuss about the introduction of a spinal cord. Then we will discuss about the meaning of SCI. It is basically a spinal cord injury. Then we will discuss that how a spinal cord is situated in our body, where it is situated and where to where uh, it occupy the space in our body. Then we will discuss about their protection, that's their covering. Then we will discuss their shape and length. We will discuss about the enlargement. Okay, spinal cord is not a symmetrical, uh, you can say the body parts in our our body. Okay, so it shows some, you can say, variation as far as their anatomical uh, shape is concerned. Then we will discuss about the ending of a spinal cord. Okay, and we will also discuss the segments and the spinal nerves. Okay, and we will see that when we dissect the spinal cord, how it look like. Okay, so we will discuss the transverse section of a spinal cord. Then their physiology. Okay, after discussing all the anatomical portion, it's, it's, it's very useful to study the physiology. And then at last we will discuss some of the clinical correlation of a spinal cord. So here we begin studying about the spinal cord. This is the human body. Okay, and the spinal cord is situated uh, behind the you can say the face face area. Okay, it's situated behind the face area. So whenever in clinically or in autopsy or you can say uh, during the postmortem, when we have to see the spinal cord, we have to place the human body in the prone position. In the prone positions. Now look like C. So this is a prone position situated human body. And in order to see the spinal cord, we have to dissect a certain body parts, okay? The first part is we have to dissect the skin, including the subcutaneous tissue. And we also have to dissect uh, some of the muscles, okay? One of the muscles is your trapezius muscles and the spinous muscle. The spinous muscle and trapezius muscles we have to dissect, okay? All right, let's begin uh, to dissect the spinal cord. Here it is a male human body. So first uh, we have to place in a prone position point of the defined defined structure. As you are seeing, we are separating the parts. The first first part, as you are seeing, this is a muscle. For seeing the spinal cord, the first muscle is called as trapezius muscle. Here, or trapezius muscle. After dissecting this, you see something, this structure, these bones, okay? So, we have to also uh, dissect the bone and this dissecting the bone is called as, this is called as the laminectomy. After, after performing the muscle incision or muscle dissections, we perform the laminectomy. Laminectomy means we have to dissect certain bones part, okay? This is the vertebral column. This is a vertebral column, a bone or, or you can say the back person bone. Okay, and it consists of a 33 individual vertebra and inside this vertebra, the spinal cord is situated. Okay, so we have to remove these projections. See, these projections are called as the bony uh, part of the vertebral column. Okay, so when we remove this bony part of vertebral column, we see the spinal cord. Okay, basically we will dissect a certain, uh, you can say the bony parts, this bony projection of vertebral columns. Okay, so here we begin C. Now after dissect, dissecting the certain structure, a certain vertebra, these are the vertebra. As you are seeing, this one is a thoracic T11 vertebra, okay, or T10 vertebra, and this is the, basically one cushion, a pad, okay. A pad or cushion called as the intervertebral discs. Okay, intervertebral discs, and this is the intervertebral foramen. Okay, this is the spinal cord. And now, if we dissect, if in order to study the internal structure, if you're talking about the superficially, superficially, uh, it is a cylindrical in shape. First of all, okay, it is a cylindrical in shape, 
and uh, if we're talking about the size it is uh, 43 44 in the male centimeter and uh, 43 in the female okay so if we perform the transverse section okay transverse section c it's look like if in zoom it this is a butterfly shape if we dissect this cylindrical spinal cord the internal structure appear as a edge shape or also like a butterfly shape now after performing the laminectomy after removing the vertebral column we see this structure this is called as the spinal cord this is a spinal cord now a spinal cord is situated okay it start from the here from the midbrain or if specifically we're talking about then this is called as the medulla region so medulla along oblongata to the l2 or l1 vertebra generally in the adult it's terminate its end to the l1 or more l2 vertebra that's why we perform the lumbar puncture which we our you can say the choice of uh, selection is the l3 or l4 or between the l3 or l4 now if we're talking about their length length varies in male and females in the males it is 45 centimeter okay in the females it is a 43 centimeter now if you're talking about their appearance and their shape it is a cylindrical in shape okay basically a spinal cord is a collection of neuronal cells okay it's a basically collection of the nerve fiber fine no problem now if talking about their cut section their cross sections are also called as the transverse section if we cut the spinal cord transversely then the spinal cords look like this now here you see one butterfly structure a dark structure a butterfly shape or edge shape structure this is called as the gray matter this is called as the gray matter fine now in the periphery of this gray matter you see the whitish area this is simply called as the white matter fine now gray matter is a collection of neuronal cell bodies gray matter is a collection of neuronal cell body whereas the white matter it is a collection of neuronal axon okay and their function varies okay their function varies now come to their protection their protection lies as the same as same as the brain okay brain is covered by the three types of covering okay three types of covering starting from outer to inner then outer we have the dura matter it is a tough okay it's a tough then we have the arconite matter okay arconite matter and then we have the pion matter fine so these three layers provide the protection of the spinal cord remember the spinal cord is a very delicate structure that's why nature provided so many barriers starting from as we see in the cut section so like first we have to cut the skin then certain muscles fine teeth then we have to dissect the vertebral column fine then we have to dissect these three uh, you can say the protective layer and then we see the spinal cord clear now coming to the part of the spinal cord as we seen the first two transverse part one is called the gray matter another one is called the white matter now you see this depressions you see the depression this depressions is called as the anterior fissure okay this is called as the anterior fissure and behind this there is a presence of posterior fissure you see a one space between this gray matter and this space is called as the central canal now the critical importance of this central canal is that here the spinal fluid or you can say the cerebrospinal fluid is circulating through this spinal canal the the cerebrospinal fluid is circulating and this nerve fiber it is coming from the brain it is coming from the higher regions or you can say the central nervous system got it no problem now coming to their function coming to their function a spinal cord is act like a messenger superhighway okay it's act like a messenger superhighway whatever information is going to the higher system it is going through the vertebral you can sorry it is going through the spinal cord okay and uh, for that there are nerve fibers okay for that there are nerve fibers basically the white matter it is consist of the non myelinated neurons okay non myelinated neurons and gray matter mostly consist of the myelinated neurons fine now the function of this uh, white matter which is a uh, myelinated 
it forms the track it forms the track track in terms of like it forms the ascending track and it forms the descending tracks okay now talking about the ascending tracks ascending tracks takes the masses from all over the body which kind of messages it takes messages of your temperature okay it take is 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 take the information of the pressure it takes the information of various type of sensation a vibration okay two point discrimination tactile sensation everything is goes through the this white matter track or called as the ascending track whereas we also have certain uh, descending tracks which is directly come from the central nervous system you know that central nervous system first receive the command then how it's received it's received through the spinal cord fine and then it is send the message it send the message through the spinal cord now you may thinking that okay spinal cord is act like a channel it's act like a conduit yeah it's like it act largely it's act like a conduit but my friends certain information are directly you can say analyzed by the spinal cord okay certain message is not depends upon the higher system it will reflect like for example you see you suddenly touch some heat area or heat portion okay you immediately uh, put out your hands away your hands how it's possible this is possible through the spinal cord certain mild mild pain okay certain mild pain all are terminated uh, only in the spinal cord it not send the message to the higher system and this phenomenon is called as the reflex arc this phenomenon is called as the reflex arc now after discussing all these now we have to discuss about their clinical importance now the clinical importance of the spinal cord is that there are certain tests there are certain tests by which we can analyze we can you can say make a one clinical judgment about certain diseases like multiple sclerosis okay uh, like certain you can say the motor neuron diseases then how let's see one of the clinical importance of the, related with the spinal cord is the deep tendon reflex okay you will uh, you can say you hit this area okay and it's so one jerk phenomenon it's so one jerk phenomenon it's called as the deep tendon reflex that's the one clinical importance another one is called as the babensky sign okay and babensky signs have a great clinical importance in the babensky signs you uh, tip a uh, certain you can say one sensible like the pain or any sharp instrument okay and you uh, basically touch the great toe or you can say touch the feet area okay you touch the feet area and by this you observe a one kind of reflex and that is called as the babensky sign so if there is a negative babensky the greater toe this greater toe is is it's bent inward it's bent inward but if Uh, it's bent upward. Okay, if the great toe bent upward, it shows certain you can say the motor neuron diseases. It shows like uh, maybe person have uh, paralysis or maybe person have the, some cer- certain degenerative neuronal degenerative disorders like the multiple sclerosis. Fine. So I hope you understand today's lecture. Basically, we studied about. the spinal cord okay we have seen their anatomy we seen their physiology we also seen certain clinical importance so thank you with having us bye have a nice time